Hello, all size here. Uh, we're just going to go over the Sector 2 patch notes because it released today and we have patch notes, so let's go through them. Um, so we'll just try and be quick about this. So there's new content, new environment, new guard, new deco pack, new custodian, and new cosmetic collection. So the guard and overseer constitute a new arsenal pack. You can buy that as DLC or get that as for sales, which we'll get to in a minute because that uh, the price changed on that recently. Deco pack means more free cosmetics to build with. New cosmetic collection is another new deco pack, but also some skins. But this is this is paid. You can only get this for money, um, as opposed to the new garden overseer, which you can get for either real money or for in-game uh, resources. Um, the new difficulty system has been implemented. Uh, it works differently to the old one, but it's the same basic idea. That's what this is all talking about here. It's So, it currently is still based off what has been placed, um, but it also splits it into five skulls and you can have half skulls. So, effectively ten rankings. Um, with like half one and 1.5 being normal, 2, 2.5, and 3 being um, dangerous, and 3.5, 4, 4.5, and 5 being brutal. Um, it works differently to the old way in some respects. I think it puts more emphasis on overlapping traps, or traps really close to one another, but uh, it's you will need to experiment to actually find out exactly how it works. And obviously, as this has just come out, we haven't done that. No one's done that yet. Um, especially not me, who's only just woken up. Uh, sector, two, sector 1 ranking rewards and the start of the new season, whatever, that's fine. Uh, that happens with every sector. Um, enjoy them if you get them. Now, the actual patch notes. Mouse and keyboards are now supported on consoles. This is a weird patch note because typically you see mouse and keyboards were moved from console console versions because they give an advantage in first person shooter games because you're able to basically spend a lot of time. Um, with a controller you can't, uh, if you push it all the way to the end that just means spin faster but you can't like instantly do 180s. Um, or 360s, which you can do with a mouse, because uh, when you spin, because if you want to move further with a mouse, you just move the mouse further. Um, it is odd to see this added as a support, but it does mean that there's effectively no difference between uh, the power that you could have on console versus the power you could have on PC. Because um, you can now use mouse and keyboard on console. It doesn't really matter, because if you get really good with a controller, you can uh, pro, uh, you can get pretty close. I think there's at least one uh, pro CSGO player that uses a controller. Um, it's just, it's a lot more difficult to be that level of good with a controller than it is with a mouse and keyboard. Anyway, uh, Steam Deck improvements, cool. This loot registration looks really interesting, but I think it has caused some um, issues with loot collection. Um, so loot registration means that the loot registration update here means that you, when you pick up your loot in a map, you're more like uh, it's going to make sure that you actually get it when you get it out of the map, which Previously, could be a little iffy sometimes. Like if you actually counted up exactly how much synthite you gained, you didn't necessarily match up with what it told you you gained after after the fact, um, which was frustrating. But like the only way to get more synthite was to grab more of the piles, so you still just needed to do it anyway. Um, and they've also changed the 3D preview when you're in the loadout screen. The lighting color should be more natural, which, uh, more neutral, sorry, uh, which, yeah, loadout, the, I know this from making all my thumbnails, the, the loadout view of your custodian looks real weird, 
um, didn't render like it how it would in game, which was odd. But anyway, that'll be nice. It, like it wasn't a big deal, and, but it's nice to have it fixed, which is probably true for pretty much anything that you could put in a quality of life section. Okay, balance changes. Let's quickly go over these. Arsenal item costs. The arsenal items are all being reduced from 15,000 cells to 7,500 cells. This is probably fairly good because 15,000 cells is a lot of cells. Uh, it took, you, gotta, you get about 82 cells per um, brutal map, uh, 40 per dangerous and 19 per normal. So that means it's like 183 brutal maps, um, somewhere around the 366 dangerous and you know 732 normal maps um, previously, and those numbers have all just been halved, which is fine. Uh, it was also uh, 15,000 cells if you were to try and get them from gen mat from building like 9,000 gen mat bases. Uh, that was previously like 7 to 10, and it's now like 3 to 5. Uh, so 7 to 9, now it's 3 to 5. Um, uh, bases, I would say, which means that you could get a new item uh, by just by filling your slots for like a week or so, which I think is a much better cadence. Uh, 15,000 cells was much more reasonable before the mid-sector update for the Rising Tide update, because at that point, we actually got twice as much cells as we do now. Um, when they added the daily quests, the daily quests replaced both the tribute and the daily levels that were there previously, and the daily level, and it has about the equivalent resources as the daily levels used to, but it means that the 75 cells for, that you could get from repeating the tribute levels were, were removed from the game, which used to basically double your cells per gen mat. Uh, this is fine. This is this will be a lot. This will feel a lot better for new players. Uh, for people like myself who have already unlocked everything, it's not the biggest deal. Um, I also run the numbers for the full unlocks for the new stuff. Uh, so obviously 7500 for just the actual base unlock. Um, to max the suit, it costs 7950 uh, and 7400 parts. Um, <coughs> to max the guard, it only takes like 3850 cells um, and 3575 synthite. Um, which, considering synthite is normally the resource that most people are lacking, that's quite a lot of synthite. It's like um, half a base, I would say, or probably not quite, but the you could definitely get a few a few days of a base going for that. Um, but it does mean that you get a whole new toy to play with, so that's cool. Uh, this here is probably the big uh, this okay. This isn't the biggest change in the patch notes, but this is the biggest change to the patch notes. When they're changing things now, instead of just saying hey, uh, what they've de done, they're actually telling us why they're doing it. And that is huge, because it means that we can have an understanding of the dev's intent here. And that makes it much more understandable why they're making these changes. So for instance here, they say, the community was a little bit hard. Uh, we the community let us know that Ravager tuning in the Rising Tide update was a little too harsh. We've done some balancing to try and make it into its intended role. Um, so its spread pattern is wider than it was in the Rising Tide update. It's still smaller than it was initially, which is good because it was way too wide initially. Because um, that it could just you couldn't get away from it, no matter how how well you were dodging or anything. Um, and it made them basically impossible to approach. Uh, they've also changed the the attack; it fires faster. Uh, the they've changed it. I th when they changed it in Rising Tide, they made it slower before it did its initial attack. But I don't think they actually changed their attack, the fire rate. Um, but they've now increased its fire rate, which means that it fires real fast at the moment. 
but the other downsides of like it not being able to attack beyond seven blocks and whatnot still seem to be in effect and that puts it much more in this like close range shotgunner ray, uh, role that it kind of needed to be in which it wasn't initially uh, initially it was good at basically all ranges which was what kind of pushed it over the edge um i think it's probably in a better it's it's definitely in a better spot than it was in rising tide um whether that spot is too far up or not quite far enough up remains to be seen we'll see over the next few weeks as people get more used to the new ravages again <laughs> um uh here's another instance of them talking about what they're doing here uh in our recent player pulse survey, the community let us know that iron cores, incinerators, plasma sentinels, and sentry beams all needed additional balancing, which three of those I would agree with. Um, but the last one I would not, which is plasma sentinels. I think they are actually in a pretty good spot, which is unfortunate because they're getting nerfed again. Uh, but they are apparently, uh, we know from the response uh, from what we've been told about the player pulse survey that it was one of the highest pressure points that the that one of the most complained about things was that plasma sentinels were too strong which while i may not agree with um the i like people like myself are generally in the minority um the the people that find the game too uh, way too easy are yeah generally in the minority there's not that many of us um we all seem to be on Discord, unfortunately, so we kind of, um, we all know, we all speak about the these things all the time, but whatever, the, that's of course going to happen, communities form, that's how communities form, just in general. Anyway, uh, Ironclaw, uh, reducing its base uh, launching speed from 1 second to 7.7 seconds, meaning that it is now the fastest firing trap, and that is a good spot for it to be in, because it's also the least dangerous trap. There's the most ways to deal with it, and it's uh, not dangerous in and of itself. So now, it's probably not strictly better to use a bolt shot for it uh, as a replacement, because bolt shots take almost twice as long to fire. It's like 1.25 seconds. So over one and a half, but not quite two. Uh, and the the grapple fire speed mod has been um, buffed a little bit as well, because previously it was like 0 0.05 seconds. It was real bad. It only cost five, so I'd often put it on, uh, just if you had some extra capacity, because faster firing is faster firing. It doesn't really matter whether it's uh, very low, because it was a very low cost. Um, incinerators are up next. Incinerator reload time was increased from 1 second to 1.5. I wasn't sure if incinerators actually had a reload time. Um, I tried testing for it, and I could never really work it out. It kind of felt like they did, but the, the problem is that most of the time when it's reloading, the fire is still dissipating. Um, so you can't really approach it properly which means that you don't really get to make use of this 1.5, uh, the one second that it was that was previously. But I think increasing it to 1.5 seconds means that you should be able to at least make use of the 0.5 seconds at the end, which means that now to deal with an incinerator, the best way is to trigger the incinerator back up out of its range, uh, assuming that you're trying to melee it, um, you could trigger an incinerator back up out of its range uh, as the fire is going down, go towards it, and you should be able to, uh, you'll have an extra 0.5 seconds to get to it, which is a little bit safer. I think that's a good change, like that is definitely a good change. Anything that weakens possibly one of the strongest traps in the game uh, is is a good idea, and this isn't going to like decimate incinerators. This isn't a like complete overhaul that's going to completely destroy them. This is a small tweak that could possibly be enough to bring them in line. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Plasma Sentinels have been nerfed again. Detection. This time it's detection range, which has dropped half a block, uh, two meters, uh, from, from 
24 to 22, meaning it's gone from 6 to 5.5 .5 blocks. Um, I like they're not super effective at long ranges, so I don't really know if that's going to have much impact. Uh, the reload time though is going up from 2.25 to 2.75. That could have more of an impact because um, it means that you've got more time to approach them, but 2.25 is a very long time to approach them, especially considering unlike the incinerators, which seem to, um, which you have to wait for the flames to dissipate, which takes up a lot, which I think takes up a lot of the reload time. You can actually approach the plasma sentinel while it, the bullet's still out because you can dodge around the bullet pretty easily. So, yeah, extra 0.5 seconds. It, um, this is, I think, a bigger deal than the section range when it comes down to it. But we'll have to see how it shakes out. Um, hopefully, people will stop complaining about Plasma Sentinels in the player surveys and they'll stop getting nerfs. But until such a time that that happens, they're probably going to keep getting nerfs. Um, which is unfortunate because they're on their way to being completely useless. Um, this probably isn't enough to make them completely useless, but I do think they might feel bad now instead of actually feeling okay. Uh, sentry beams, uh, the numbers here are, seem to basically be that the sentry beam is becoming, the base sentry beam is becoming what the burst beam is, and the burst beam is becoming faster than that overall, which, sure, uh, sentry beams track so slowly, there's so many ways to deal with them, They're, um, they've got huge reloads, uh, reload times as well, it's, I don't think, like, I had them rated in my tier list as fairly low, at them as a D, um, so this is probably fine, like, this seems like a pretty massive buff, uh, honestly, and they they really needed it. Um, obviously there was some stuff that you could do with the slowness where you sent them around like really long passageways, but I think that's still going to work. Like I feel like that's still going to work, it's just um, maybe the timing on some maps will be messed up a little bit. Anyway, Biolinks. Uh, Quick Strike's getting a buff. I don't know why quick strikes getting a buff but because i'm pretty sure that's like to me that is the best perk on the kamatachi suit and that's already a pretty good uh good perk just in general but um i suppose it's not quite in in line with like magnetic link um on the iron side uh, and like a power thing but so I'm not I'm not going to complain about this, uh, but yeah, ten percent extra melee lunge speed on each stage, um, which means you get to go even faster. Um, and they say that it was implemented to ensure that they get out of their animations quicker. I haven't run the numbers on how much quicker this is, because uh, it's not actually ten percent because they're uh, going for because uh, you you're already at. 145, so 10% additive on top of that is not 10% of that. that would, you would need like 14.5 to be an additional 10%. Um, but it's probably a couple frames, and I can't complain about that. Uh, loot is now registered during the back end during raids. This is what I was talking about before. Um, the So it's on the back end, so you should actually get the loot that you pick up, um, which wasn't always consistent previously, uh, but this will also prevent loot farms from being abused because previously you could die three times then go back in. Um, uh, like, yeah, uh, you could die three times to a loot farm, leave the base, go back into the base, and then die three more times after cl clearing everything. Which would get you to the each three deaths will get you to the diminishing returns. They were also um, providing all the experience for the previous times that you had gone through. I don't know if that is fixed, 
uh, but hopefully it is. Uh, hopefully that includes that's included here. Um, so people aren't getting ludicrous amounts of experience when they uh, close out and reopen loot bases. But they definitely won't be getting quite. They'll get basically no loot after after they run through the loot outposts enough times and they won't be able to close and reopen it to refresh that so yeah nerf to loot farms you have to find it you'll just have to find a new loot farm uh you can't just find one and then be set for life which for people that use loot farms they're probably going to complain but they like it wasn't really unfair uh, advantage that they had the they were getting honestly ludicrous amounts of uh, resources at times especially with the bug about leveling up okay now on to actual bug fixes so these generally bug fixes are strictly positive because it's fixing something that was broken but uh, we'll see because sometimes sometimes uh, not all bugs are strictly negative, but we'll just go over them. Uh, there was an issue that caused guards to attack raiders while standing on the edge of the safe zone. That's silly, they shouldn't actually be able to see you while you're in the safe zone at all, so that's good to have removed. Um, issue causing ravages to idle despite being in light, despite having a line of sight on the radar. That just makes sense, like, that shouldn't have been happening. Preventing issues to respawn in safe zone shortly after exiting the safe zone. Okay, uh, that shouldn't have been happening. Anything that prevents respawn is bad. Um, fix an issue causing loot to clip into blocks. That was annoying. <laughs> and that seems to have... Um, look, it seems to have pushed all the loot that was stuck in blocks that were on your maps um, out of the block. So you have to go uh, back into the base and pick it up. And unfortunately, on bases currently, you can't just leave and get your loots like you used to be able to. It's not mentioned here, so I don't know if it was actually intended or if it's just something that broke in the update. We will find out. Um, fixed an issue causing tests from here to not always spawn the player at the current position. That was really annoying. Um, there were some times when I was testing something that was quite far into a base that I just didn't want to go through the whole base to get to. You try, which is when you'd use test from here, and it would just put me at the start, and I was so annoyed every time it happened. Uh, there's a missing HUD prompt for hide all range previews, which is very good because that's something that you probably want to do as you're leaving the base because it shows up on the thumbnail. Um, it's nice to have the prompts for that actually be visible so we can do that now. Uh, and apparently Plasma Sentinel danger score was not being calculated properly again. And uh, it says that there's a little note here that this could cause some existing outpost typical ratings to increase, which means that it must have been undervaluing them still even after that, that got fixed in the last update. I do like that they've actually put this in as a note here to tell people, because there were a lot of complaints, that difficulty rating increase when they fixed the last set of bugs about difficulty rating increase, uh, that were causing difficulty ratings to be lower than they should have been. Um, and you need to fix your difficulty ratings. You need to fix the bugs with difficulty ratings before you can, you know, look at the overall system and see if it's working. And as they are adjusting difficulty rating at the moment because of the it being the new like quality of life feature um, it you can't have a bug like that currently that would um, they need to be te they need those bugs gone so they can be testing what's actually what actually works uh, in co-op uh, I think these are all disconnect issues uh, things that cause you to crash or disconnect it's hard to complain about any of those, but yeah, co-op's more stable than it was before. Uh, the social raid icon didn't always show in the replay menu. I've seen that before. I was like, why is this not a social raid? But yeah, it's 
it was a social raid, it just didn't show the icon properly. Um, fix an issue causing XP icons to show in social raid. Cool. Um, I don't think that matters too much realistically, but um, the in replays they would display inconsistent colors. Uh, not record the first step of the radar. I don't think I ever saw that. Not sure what that one's about. Fix an issue causing pass a lot of input when navigating in to the filter tab in the replay menu. Not sure what that one's about. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they haven't mentioned anything about the one where you get stuck at like 150. Uh, it may just have been missed out on the patch notes though, we'll see. We fixed an issue causing modified key bindings. That was a pain. If you modified the key bindings, it just would reset after each patch. Uh, didn't happen initially, but started happening around sector one. Which, yeah, you just don't like. You don't want people to have to put in their key bindings every single time. That's silly. Uh, apparently, the haptic feedback caused by death pistons was in, was really strong, and it's been toned down a little bit. Uh, some navigation on Xbox to not influence loot earned. Is it fix an issue causing strip mine boost to not influence loot earned by as a builder? So that's one of the boosts from the guards, but I don't know which one that is off the top of my head. Um, but apparently it was an impacting builder. I don't normally use the boosts anyway, uh, but. That's because my resources are really over the top at this point. Fixing issue causing new item locations to show in context when there are new item cannot be accessed or viewed. Okay, so this is like if you own a cosmetic pack but don't own the item that the cosmetic pack applies to. That's fine. Like it new item notifications are annoying when especially when you can't clear them. Uh some daily sometimes daily challenge wouldn't update after a refresh. Cool, that's good to have fixed. This one here is pretty big. Fix an issue leading to users at master rank level to be ranked below users with less ranking points. So you could have like 400,000 points and have someone else have 370,000 points and they would be a higher rank than you, which didn't make sense because the ranking should be from uh, most points to least. And it's good to have that fixed. We'll see how that goes in this ranked season. Um, oh, you just can't delete owned outposts on Xbox consoles. That was weird. that would have been weird, especially if you got to two hundred and need, really needed to. But it's nice it's fixed. Not that it ever affected me though, because Xbox consoles. Uh, there's an audio issue that was fixed with Plasma Sentinel Cloud VFX to suddenly disappear when using the Plasma Sentinel Cloud and self-destruct mods. Cool. Just audio issue that was fixed. Um, there were issues where sometimes the explosion, which would be the self-destruct mods, wouldn't destroy certain traps while they were in range. Um, don't recall where that... Uh, what was causing that but yeah that could be a problem because you would assume that it's cleared if uh, especially the immediate facility if a self-destruct went off and that would say that it wasn't even though it should have been um, and the hardened skin mod was not blocking incendiary f uh, incinerator fire when it should have that has been fixed that was on the known issues board um, you had to like trigger the fire then walk around the the hard block. Um, I remember there was at least one kill box set up that I played that was abusing that. And it wasn't super powerful, but it was annoying when you were. Because, um, like, you, sh you. It's one of those situations where you think, where you, by the rules of the game, know you should be safe, but you're not. And yeah, it's fixed now. So, cool. We'll just deal with that. Uh, and that's it for the patch notes. Um, overall, for the balancing changes, like what they've actually intended to do has been very good. 
Um, obviously, we don't know, we don't have full details on what bugs are in this patch because there, there are always, there are always bugs in any piece of software. Um, and hopefully, there's nothing too awful. Um, I have heard of some things going around related to the new tarp decoration. Um, but we'll see how that turns out in the long run. Um, and yeah, generally speaking, what, what they have intended to change, what's listed here, um, is very good. Um, there are some possible unintended changes, like the fact that you when you leave an outpost, you don't immediately pick up all the rewards um, that I hope get fixed. Um, but, uh, and whatever shenanigans going on with the tarp decoration. And there might be some more things that come out during the... Uh, during the next few weeks that people work out over time. But for now, like, what was intended to be changed was very good. I quite like all this. Uh, obviously, the bug fixes, there's nothing, there's nothing super controversial in the bug fixes. Um, the, everything here is kind of what I would have expected. Uh, like, is moving things from what was obviously broken to what it should have been in the first place, which is what you would, what a bug fix should be. Uh, balance changes all seem nice. I, I especially like the arsenal item cost one. That's a very, like, it doesn't have a super big impact on me because I have so much resources, but this means that, like, these numbers are, like, this is, like, a week versus this is, like, two weeks of, like, pretty solid play. Um... And I think that's just better for new players. Um, and it's not as big a deal when we get in these like half arsenal packs where it's only got two things, but it would be a very big deal when you're getting like four, because four items would cost 60 grand of cells and you can only hold 100. Um, and it takes... It takes pretty much three months of pretty solid play to like fill that. Sometimes more. Um, all the balance changes are. Besides the plasma signal stuff, I was happy with all the other stuff, so that's fine. Uh, and I'm not going to complain about quick strike being slightly better. Melee is in uh, not a great spot in general, so we'll see how that impacts it. And the and this loot stuff, no, it's just great. I. It is nicer to ha to be getting the loot that you're expecting, especially now that there's a bio link on the uh, overseer here that actually lets you focus it, focus on loot pickup. Anyway, uh, for now that will be it. I will have quite a few videos coming out in the next week or two, um, just based off some of this stuff. Like I'll probably I know I'm going to be streaming on Friday. Uh, I'm just going to do just a general stream where I mess around with the Overseer suit, which it won't be my first impressions because I'm going to be playing it today and tomorrow um, beforehand, but the uh, it will be before it will be before I do a suit guide, which will probably be on Saturday. Um, I'll probably put out quick tips for where the armor placement is on the new assassin on um, Tuesday next week or so, and there might be just some more streams because I'm actually on leave uh, from work for the next couple of weeks, so I might just do some more streams in general. We'll see how that goes, um, just because I've got free time to do them. Uh, but yeah, that's it for now. I shall see you next time.